Hello folks, today I want to talk about the Standard Electric Time Master Clock. I completed a very long series in the full restoration of this clock, but uh, not everyone may have that amount of time to go through the whole process. So I kind of wanted to do a summary video that talked about the purpose of this clock, the major functions and how it would work. So a master clock like this had, generally speaking, two functions. That was to run slave clocks as well as bells. And so this would be done in a factory, in a school, somewhere where there would be more than one clock that you would want to always keep time together. And this clock is from St. Paul Fire Station uh, number 24, there it is and it is in St. Paul, Minnesota. It's very fun to have the original glass that is etched to show that. So we're Minnesota clocks and watches. It's always great to have a clock with provenance like this. So this clock ran the clocks in various places of the fire station as well as the shift bells. This would not have run the fire bells, but this would have run the shift change bells of the, uh, the fire station. So let's take a look. This is a combination electric mechanical clock. It is powered by 24 volts DC. I'll show you the context at the top of the clock in a minute. But it has a conventional mechanical escapement movement. What they have done is they use electricity to wind the clock, but the actual timekeeping is still done the way that it had been done for 300 years before that with the mechanical gear train and a deadbeat escapement, which you can see here. The difference is what's done with that. And if you look right about one o'clock, behind the escape wheel, you can see an arm going around, and that is an electrical contact that does some functions. One of those is it's going to advance this tape mechanism, and it also winds the clock at the same time as well as this contact that's now in front of the escape wheel at about 10.30 or 11 o'clock, that is the contact that drives the slave clocks. And it's really an ingenious design using the timekeeping of the clock, uh, the way that they've always worked with an escape wheel that goes around once a minute to do various tasks. So how this works is uh, there are relays and solenoids around in the clock. The main winding solenoid is at the base of the clock here, this gray thing that lifts this ratchet mechanism, which actually winds this torsion spring just enough to let the clock run for one minute. And it does that winding every minute. And that keeps the rate very similar over the, the run of the clock. And this will run forever in theory if you don't uh, run out of electrical power. Around the clock are these relays and they are numbered. This one is number two. Up there is number one. On the far side are three and four. And these drive up to four different bell zones around your building. This fifth solenoid up here is what drives the slave clocks. So how does all this work? Well, the slave clock is pretty simple. Every minute the slave clock ratchets one minute worth by receiving a pulse, just a simple switch closure from the clock that sends electricity into it, which advances a ratchet system inside the slave. And that means every clock in the building receives that pulse at the same time. So every clock in the building will show exactly the same time advancing at exactly the same instant. It's an ingenious way of keeping every clock the same so that you don't have one classroom leaving five minutes before the others uh, everybody's on exactly the same time source. The bells are a little bit more complicated, and that brings us to this tape system. This is right out of an old mainframe computer or something, and the tape is marked in hours and minutes. There you can see 1 o'clock in the red, 105, 110, 115, 120, and every minute is labeled in these little squares. So when you want the bell to ring, you would punch out that minute that you want the bell to ring. And then these contacts would fall through and make electrical contact. I'm gonna switch this uh, into a different mode here so we can see the, the contacts in motion. 
Right now, the contacts are not making contact with this post because the paper is an insulator. But when these contacts encounter a punched out hole, that electrical contact will be made and that will cause the bell to ring. Very cool system. This clock knows the difference between days of the week and it actually knows the difference between AM and PM. And it can actually drive four completely different bell schedules depending upon what you want. You can see that this particular tape has been punched a couple times on channel two. Uh, over here, you can see on the back that both channels one and two are punched. This other tape over here has very few holes in it. So you could have four completely different schedules powering different parts of your building if you had you know, different grades in a school or different shift change times. All of that driven off of this punch tape. There are a few controls at the bottom. These are, um, this, this one here winds the clock. If power is lost, you can manually wind the clock and that will um, advance the, the spring so that the clock will run. Over here, we have a slave clock adjuster button. If, if I push this, that will manually advance the slave clock a minute. We have bell enable switches. Over here is bell circuit one and two, bell circuit three and four. And if you don't want a bell to ring for some reason, you can just slide these switches over and whatever zone you move will be disabled. And the slave clocks have that same function. We can disable the slave clocks. And below here, we have our bell override buttons. Again, bell zone one, two, three, and four. And if I press that, we can actually hear our bell ring. There we go, this is a period bell from, uh, it says patented 1907, I don't know exactly when this one was made, but it's in the general range. How this bell works is much the same as how the clock operates. We have an electromagnet that pulls the ringer in when it receives power. And this contact right up here, when broken, uh, releases the magnetic power so that the bell strike returns and then power is applied again which draws it forward and back and forward etc. And that's our bell. All of this was invented a very long time ago. This clock dates to 1918 as we can see in the glass. But Standard Electric Time actually made these in the 1880s I believe. And they ran on dry cell batteries uh, you know, before electric wiring was common. This one probably always was designed with a constant AC supply. But anyway, I, I love the business problems that these clocks were intended to solve and how effectively they did that. The slave clock world where you can synchronize your entire building to the minute is just a fantastic thing because managing, I, I, I maintain a lot of clocks in my home here and it takes me a half an hour every week to wind and adjust everything. Having every clock in a commercial building be always exactly the same is just a magical deal. And the ingenuity of how they used the punch tape system to ring the bells is very cool. Clocks like this are maybe not the best choice to have running in your home because they do a lot of stuff. They clunk and bang every 30 seconds and... Um, that, that can be distracting. I think those of us that love clocks can get over the, the chimes because they're pretty. Uh, this takes maybe a little bit more special love to put up with the, the clunking, but they sure are a cool mechanical piece of history. So wanted to just give you the flyover of what's supposed to happen here. If you're interested in more detail, please check out the, the long series I did in uh, fully restoring this clock and going through all the pieces in more detail. Thanks for watching.